Hi, my name is Ryan Winger with Seafloor Systems. Today we are going to be discussing our Hydrone remote control vehicle. We'll be looking at the user manual, the setup, installation, and what it takes to operate this remote control vehicle. Now, what is this vehicle? It is a platform to be able to do hydrographic surveys from anywhere in shores, any lakes, ponds, estuaries, or other small bodies of water that need a bathymetric survey done. Now we will be taking a look at all the internal components of the Hydrone remote control vehicle. This system includes two pontoons, one left and one right, a mounting frame to mount our Hydrolyte TM single beam echo sounder on, four 12 volt sealed lead acid batteries, a schematic showing how to set up the boat, a Hydrone quick start guide, a Futaba controller to operate the remote control vehicle, two battery chargers, a spare kit, and a custom shipping case in order to ship the case in. The watertight and, and low profile design of our boat allows for a, a plethora of equipment to be added to it. A standard bathymetry survey would be set up to have a Hydrolyte TM or DFX, which is our single frequency or dual frequency echo sounders. A GPS antenna will be screwed on top of the boat and a data collector will be pole mounted in order to collect your depth and your GPS data. In addition to our single frequency and dual frequency echo sounders, you can also pole mount a side scan or an ADCP system. Now let's take a look at the internal components of our boat. We have a 65 millimeter propeller with an internal shaft. There are three black hatches that allow you to get into these internal components. So with this rear hatch, you see the internal shaft, you see the, you see the back end of the motor here, the water pump with both a water filter and the other inline going up to the speed controller. Now let's take a look at the internal components of this middle hatch. We have a speed controller, we have a motor, and we have a two channel Futaba receiver. This takes the signal from your Futaba controller and tells the speed controller what to do. Our remote control boats, each pontoon has its own Futaba controller. The right pontoon needs to be plugged into COM2 and the left pontoon needs to be plugged into COM3. Now let's take a look at the internal components of our front hatch. What you see here is our 12 volt sealed lead acid battery. Our connectors have keyed bullet connectors so that positive and negative can only go to each other. With this battery, it is possible to achieve 12 miles per hour. We also have a high speed battery option if you are interested. Each pontoon for the remote control Hydrone has an on off switch and it also has a fin to protect the propellers. You mount these fins on the outside of the hydro. Preparing the boat for transport. Before you head to your job site, these are some steps that you can take to pre-assemble your boat. Our hardware kit for the hydro remote control vehicle includes four bolts for the mounting frame, two bolts for the fins, two Allen wrenches, two set screws for the internal shaft, two replacement water filters, a neck strap for your Futaba controller, and a single replacement tube. You will want to mount your mounting frame onto the boat using your hardware bolts. Secondly, you will want to make sure that you have backup AA batteries for your Futaba controller. Before you put the vehicle into the water, there are a few steps that you will want to take. First step, with the small Allen key, you will want to tighten a few set screws. The first set screw that you will need to tighten when on the survey site is right here on the base of this shaft. There's number one. There are also four additional set screws connecting into the motor. You will want to tighten each one of these set screws. You will need to spray a light grade oil such as WD-40 
or three and one if you have it into the shaft that you see here. So putting a piece of napkin, something so that you don't get oil everywhere underneath the shaft, you're going to put pressure down into this hole and twist the propeller here until you see the oil residue come out of this slot. After applying the three in one oil, you'll be able to replace this rubber cap onto the shaft. You will also put the water absorbent sponge into the back of your boat. You can now seal the hatch firmly to avoid water leakage. In this middle hatch, you're going to want to make sure that the speed controller is in the on position. In the front hatch, you're going to want to make sure that the battery is secured properly, is in position, and is fully charged. At this point, you are ready to conduct your survey. For this section, your remote control boat will be on your survey site in the water. Before you turn your vehicle on, please make sure that both Futaba controls are in the middle position. If these controls are not in the middle position, the boat will not set up, start, or function properly. At this point, you are good to turn on the Futaba controller. When I turn this on, I get a warning signal and it says WARN-THR. At this point, with the left stick, I will go all the way down and back to center. This arms the system, arms the controller, and gets the system ready to operate. You can now switch your pontoons into the on position. If the system is functioning properly, you will hear two signals. If you continue to hear pulses, please see our troubleshooting video. Once the pontoons are on, you can test each stick to make sure that the left and right sticks have the same amount of power control. If both propellers are spinning at the same rate, you are ready to configure your GPS and your depth sounder and to complete your bathymetry survey. You've completed your survey, collected your data, and now you're on your survey site ready to clean up. Let's take a look at the steps that you need to complete in order to clean and maintain your remote control vehicle. Depending upon if you're in salt or fresh water, there are different steps that you need to take. If you turn off the Futaba controller before turning off the pontoons, the engine will continue to run, so you must be careful that you do not hurt yourself. Cleaning and maintenance after surveying in fresh water. Before you take your boat out of the water, you will want to turn both of your pontoons off. Once you turn your pontoons off, you can then turn off your Futaba controller. At this point, you are ready to take the boat out of the water. You must make sure that both pontoons remain level as you pick the vehicle up. If you do tilt the pontoons and there is water inside the vehicle, it is going to negatively affect the internal equipment. You can now place the vehicle onto the dock, making sure that you do not negatively impact the, the propellers. Open up the rear hatches and check the water absorbent sponge that is on the inside. If there is liquid on the sponge, you're going to want to lean the boat back, collecting all the water in the back of the vehicle. The whole point of this is trying to eliminate the water coming forwards where the important internal equipment is. At this point, you are ready to return all hatches, except for one on each vehicle to allow for the system to dry. Cleaning your vehicle after use in salt water or contaminated areas. First step is to turn off your pontoons. Once you complete this, you can turn off your Futaba controller. Once all systems are off, you're ready to take the boat out of the water. When you do so, 
make sure that you keep both pontoons level. If you are to tilt the boat and there is water inside the boat, it's going to rush forwards and it's going to damage the internal equipment. When testing the Hydron remote control boat in salt or contaminated water, it is necessary to run fresh water through the water filter afterwards. To do so, we'll disconnect the two plastic connectors with the red cable. Make sure you do not touch the one with the black cable. By disconnecting these two plastic connectors, the ones with the red cable, you'll disconnect and connect them into the alternative switch. After switching the two plastic connectors with the red cable, you will simply turn the power onto the boat and clean water will now be running through the water filter and through all of the internal components. After running clean water through the water pumps, you are now ready to put the hatches back on the boat and to go back to your, to your shop. What we suggest is that you leave one hatch open to be able to air the system out while you're in transit. If you have any other questions, please give us a call.